Okay, everybody. So, a few months ago, there was a lot of stuff on the news about the pulling down of statues. And it had something to do with the Black Lives Matter slogan. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you about one particular example as to why this happened. And this is the statue of somebody in Bristol, which is a, a, a big city in the west of England. And he was a slave trader. His name was Edward Coulson. So there, these people who were protesting, Black Lives Matter supporters, they pulled the statue from the plinth and then they threw the statue into the River Avon. That's the name of the river that flows through Bristol. Now that, in a sense, is an illegal activity. It's, uh, it, they could be prosecuted by the police for something like that. So why did they do it? And as you can see from the slide, they're not all black people. There's white people as well. There's white people and they're black people. And they've decided that Edward Coulson deserves to be thrown into the river. Now, the reason is that Bristol was one of the ports that was very much involved in the slave trade. And we're talking about, at its height, something like 250, 260 years ago in the, in the 18th century. It wasn't just Bristol, it was also Liverpool in the north of England and London. Those were the three main slave ports. And shall we say that Bristol made a huge amount of money out of the slave trade. And our friend Edward Colson was one of the slave traders. He was a merchant and he became virtually a millionaire as a result of the slave trade. So let's have a look at a map of the slave trade. If you notice there, it's called History of the Triangular Slave Port. Well, what was the triangular trade? Well, basically, someone like Edward Colson would send a cargo from Bristol to West Africa to sell cheap goods. Um, it, it could be all kinds of things, old fashioned muskets and things like that, to African chiefs. African chiefs would then provide the slaves who would be taken across the Atlantic Ocean and they would be taken to the Caribbean, to what we call the West Indies. And the biggest slave island there is Jamaica. And what they did is they, they grew sugar and they exported the sugar back to Britain, so, so back to Bristol. So that's why it's called Triangular. There's one part there. One part of the triangle goes to West Africa. The second part of the triangle goes to the Caribbean. Then the third and final part of the triangle brings the sugar back. And the sugar would be sold at unbelievable profits because the slaves weren't paid. They were doing this all for free. And therefore, this was an example of an incredible level of exploitation. So if you imagine those slaves working on the plantations and how much work they had to do under the hot sun, and then that sugar coming back to Bristol and being sold in the rest of Britain and throughout the rest of Europe for incredibly big profits. So how bad was the slave trade? Well, let's have a look at this picture. These are the slaves being put into the slave ship. Now, first of all, they're chained up. They've got what are called manacles around them. That's a kind of chain around their ankle. They're being pushed down into the inside of the ship, what we call the hold. And they're going to be chained up there. They're going to be they're going to be really close to each other, so disease will spread, and many of them will not get across the Atlantic Ocean. If they resist in any way, have a look at that. There is a whip, and that whip will be used upon the slaves if they dare to fight back. So, if you imagine how awful this was. And just think what it was like when they were put inside that uh, inside that ship. You imagine how terrible the conditions were. And remember, it takes about three months on a sailing ship. They, they were all sailing ships in those days. 
across the Atlantic Ocean. And it was, it was absolutely awful. So just, just look at that and have a look at the expressions on the great slave traders' faces. Is there any sense of pity? Is there any sense that these people are human beings? Not at all. Not at all. They are regarded as animals, really. The racism was such that the white people believed that blacks were not human beings at all, that they were a separate creation. People believed then that that every, everything had been created by God at, at that time, and therefore this this was this was a separate creation from from uh, from white people. Where they got those ideas from is, is you know is is, is 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 another question. But they they believed in them because they wanted to believe in them because it suited it suited the amount of money they were making to believe in them. If you were a rich slaveholder, like slave trader, like Edward Colson, how could you spend your money? Well, this is this is not actually to do with Edward Colson itself, but this is this is a house which is at the time when the slave trade would be at their height. It's it's called the Georgian House because the Georgian kings were on the throne, and you can see it's really splendid, many many rooms, beautiful building, with servants maybe even hundreds of servants and some of the merchants like Edward Colson would have spent their money on mansions like that. They would even have had black slaves as well as white servants but when they came to England they, were, they had to be servants, they had to be paid because slavery was not allowed actually in England itself. It was only allowed in what was called England's colonies, the area, the possessions that England owned overseas. So, if, I, if you just contrast that with that. So those people had to suffer and had to go into the hold of those ships and then had to work on, on, on the plantations when they got to the West Indies in order for that to happen. I'll do it again. That had to happen in order to that that happens. So, so the black people, the African people, are exploited. They are used. They are treated dreadfully in order that a few white merchants and slave traders can live in luxury. So think how much a chandelier would cost in a building like that. And think about how many slaves had to die in order for that because maybe 30% of those people aren't going to even survive the voyage and get to the Caribbean because the conditions are so bad but that will ultimately pay for that because if you go back to the thing there when you when you sell the sugar in Britain and the rest of Europe people really want the sugar it's, it's, a, it's a commodity that everybody wants to buy and therefore you're going to make massive profits. So how does this link with black lives matter? Well, you can understand, if you go back to that, they did not matter then. These are black lives and they did not matter. And they didn't matter to Edward Colson because he was making so much money out of it. Therefore, that's why they're pushing the statue of Edward Colson into the river even. So let's... I will look at it again. Bristol, major slave trading port. The triangular trade made huge profits because the sugar came back and could be sold at a very, very, very high level of profit indeed. Those are the conditions the black slaves were put into and that was that was made that was the that was the grandeur that was made on the backs of those black slaves. So that's the connection with Black Lives Matter. Thank you very much for listening.